Hello and welcome along to another episode of this Cricket 19 career with me Daniel. It's episode 39 and today we're back for the final group game in the T20 Blast. We're playing against Warwickshire who are bottom of the table as we look to cement our place at finals day. We're of course top of the league at the moment, joint with Middlesex, but of course they've already played their 14th game. So we're hoping we can do the job on Warwickshire today and cement our place on top spot with 11 wins out of 14. It really would be a remarkable achievement and signify continued success at T20 level. Of course we won that tournament with our club side Leeds and now we look to replicate it with our County Yorkshire. So we'll get into that one in a moment but I have got to talk to you about our first sticky patch of form at County level. We've really struggled in the last few games and we've been developing a lot slower than normal. We have done okay with the ball though which has kind of given us a bit of a free pass. So let's go and look at Division 2 for the T20 Blast just so you can see what's been happening recently. I think you were with me for the Somerset game last time. That was followed by a game against Nottinghamshire. We won by five wickets, but we didn't contribute much. An economy of three, two wickets for nine runs. Brilliant with the ball yet again. But with the bat, we only managed three off eight, and Patterson got a caught and bowled off us. And then last time out, we did recover a little bit. We won by seven wickets against Northamptonshire. 47 off 33 after five for 14 with the ball. Ball. Sensational figures bowling at T20 level, creating so many catching opportunities and mixing things up pretty perfectly. But of course the bat is where we want to succeed and we did get back to a little bit of form in this last game. But the reason I say sticky form is because as well as that first T20 match we did play a first class game off camera and that one did not go well at all. We beat Sussex by four wickets as a club but we did not contribute much to it at all. If we go and take a look at the innings in order, first one none for 50 off 11 overs, then we got 22 off 33 with the bat and then in the second innings we didn't do much with the ball. Ball, 2 for 46, again an economy of over 4, and then with the bat just 4 off 11, caught and bowled by Chris Jordan, who seemed to have our number all match. They had a really good bowling lineup, Sussex, and they learnt this time they were bowling around the wicket, or over the wicket in the case of the left-handers, and it just meant we weren't able to get them away, and in the end we were forced into a poor shot, or we lost our discipline defensively. But thankfully our teammates got us over the line, Gary balanced with almost a century in both innings, and that was enough to win the match in the end. So a little bit of a sticky spell with this game and in the first T21 against Nottinghamshire, but we did get back to some sort of form with 47 and 5 wickets in the last match, so I'm hoping we can take that into this one against Warwickshire. Let's go and get into the match and see what conditions we've got to work with. The last couple have been dry and grassy, it's been a little bit difficult to get people away, but as we get into this one we'll find out what it's like. Back to the medium standard pitch, so we should be in our element for this one. Here we are at Headingley for the toss then, Warwickshire calling tails, let's see what it lands on and then what the skipper goes for. Still no sign of being made captain for any of the county teams, of course we've got the Sheffield Shield to look forward to, you may have even seen that on the home screen in Career Hub. We've got our first few first class games coming up and we will be skipper for that one. In this one Warwickshire have chosen to bowl, so we're going to be in to face the first delivery and we'll be back in a moment when we get to the crease to see if we can put on a decent score. Brooks a right arm seamer over the wicket for the first ball and we try to go away to our favourite leg side boundary. Again the delivery drifts and it's perfect to hit away. It's a four to start the innings, the perfect start for us. Halfway through the over and a short and full delivery have kept us at bay but this one's back where we like it and we smash it away to the leg side again and the fielder's not going to be able to cut that off. Two dot balls and two fours to start with. Eight runs off the first four balls and we go in at a strike rate of 200. No complaints at all there. Harry Brooks not had a sniff yet. Penultimate ball of the over, where's it going? It's wide outside leg stump again. I'm not sure we've got enough on this to reach the boundary, but it does just beat the fielder in the deep to the rope. And as a result, we now move on to 12 runs, and the bowler continues to persist with his poor line. He has changed his field now, but there's still a pretty big gap, so if we catch it right, we should get four more. Again, the delivery's the same. Again, the outcome is the same. He cannot cut it off despite only being five yards away. It rushed to the boundary, and it's six. 16 off the first. Harry Brook on strike to start the second. Hopefully he can continue our good work. 
Well, he's taken the easy approach to the medium pacer. Just hit a single off the first ball. We play a short one away, but it almost finds the fielder. Luckily, it bounced just before, and we get away without losing our wicket. Another dot ball, and the pressure's really building now. We just need a poor delivery we can get away on the leg side. And we've got exactly that with the very next ball, and we're going to be able to get a comfortable two. The man at square gets around to cut it off, but it is an easy two, and we retain the strike. Final ball of the over, it's been a really good one from the medium pacer. This short one's pretty high in the air, and again it finds the fielder with a bounce. 19 without loss after two overs, but only three off that second one from Miles. Harry Brooks got himself seven off three, and he's put us on strike to the seamer again. He's bowling around the wicket now, but again it's a pretty poor delivery. We don't quite time the shot right, but it is going to be a comfortable single. Three overs gone, and we're joined by Gary Balance in the middle, which means that Harry Brooks not been at his usual best today. And we're facing spin for the first time, and we've edged the first ball. Every time against the spin we get out. We've just lost our focus. We could have left it. We could have defended it for a dot ball, but we we tried to go big and we've lost our wicket and that's two in two overs for Yorkshire. So we're out for 19 off 13 balls, again not back to our best form with the bat and most of those came off the first over with four boundaries and we're going to have to do a special job with the ball now. Can lean in and balance get us to a defendable total? We'll be back in a minute to find out. Well, as you probably saw towards the end of the graphic in the last clip, we did not manage to get a decent score. 152 for 8 as we were heavily restricted. Jack Leaning doing the job by getting 61, which dragged us just past that 150 mark. Adam Life got one a ball, but he did manage to stay in and support Leaning, whereas we were the third top scorer for our team, which shows just how badly we've done generally. And then even worse, Warwickshire, who are bottom of the table, don't forget, after 9 overs are on 71 without loss and this defeat could affect our run rate as well and maybe even drop us below Middlesex. We need to find a way of getting back into this match and it's going to be down to us to try and take some wickets. So we're going to go and set our preferred field and then we'll be back in a moment for the first ball which unfortunately is against the left hander. Almost halfway through the Warwickshire innings and we're going to need a miracle to get out of this one. We've set our field then, five men outside the circle. We've got a man deep on the leg side just to try and cut off that catching chance. We've dropped him back from leg gully. We've got our usual deep forward mid wicket, a straight off, and of course a deep cover as well. In the circle, we've got point extra cover, deep mid on, and we've also got a man at backward mid wicket, so hopefully between them we can create some chances, or at least try and be economical. So let's start with the standard off break delivery, not always as successful to the left handers. This one catches him on the stump, but the difference with not having that leg gully is of course we do give away a few singles there. Hopefully the other man's a right hander, in which case I'll be pleased with that outcome. And what makes it worse is two left handers at the crease. Fortunately we can protect ourselves a bit, as we're not bowling in the power play anymore. It seems our skipper's experiment is over in that regard, but we're still struggling to take wickets against left handers, and as a result this could be a pretty dull experiment. It looks like we're just going to be coursing them to victory. They can coast against us, they don't have to worry, and another single there takes them to two off the over. Let's go for the full delivery then. Try and catch him on his pads. Is he going to come onto the front foot? He does. He's edged it, but I think it's been dropped. And as a result, there's no wicket. What an unfortunate moment that was. So again, we're going to flight one in. We've got two balls left in this over. We, of course, always finish with a top spinner. This one took away to the leg side, but he's straight to the fielder in the circle. Pretty economical. We've done a really good job. Just two runs conceded off five balls. So let's hope this one doesn't go for a boundary towards the stumps and he's hooked away and it has beaten the fielder he was charging in for some reason and it's gone past him for four six runs conceded off the over Adil Rashid back in at the other end can the England international do something special Back for our second over and both batsmen are chasing a half century here. They're on 47 each as Warwickshire move on to 95 without loss. We've got a dot ball off the first. We'll throw in the doozer just to see if we can catch him out with a wrong un. It looks unlikely at this point, although that one's in the air. But the fielder doesn't charge in. He doesn't gamble when he's playing a defensive game. One bounce straight to him and it's just going to be another single. 
Let's go for the flight of delivery then. We'll just follow the usual pattern. There's no need to try and mix it up here as it has been going horribly wrong. This one straight to the fielder again. At least we've been relatively economical. Time for the full delivery. The only one that really caused a bit of trouble in the last over. He's on the stumps and he's done well to dig that one out. He's straight to the fielder at deep mid on. Standard off breaker and then the top spinner will finish. Hopefully it will be more successful than the last over. He's edged. I think he's out. Oh, he's dropped it. You have got to be joking. Apologies for the smack there. That was really disappointing. We just watched him edge it through to the keeper and he somehow managed to drop it. We thought we created a chance at last and I think we now know it's not going to be our day. So we'll go for the top spinner. Hopefully there won't be butter in the keeper's hands again. But this one he isn't needed for. Is it straight to the man at deep mid on? A brilliant over only one conceded but that chance to get a wicket and finally get into the game has been cost by our wicket keeper having butter fingers. Third over then Pollock well past his half century now he's on to 59 and stays on strike Webster's still on 47 at the other end he's not faced many balls since our last one. Let's see what we can do with the first delivery here another dot ball as we build up the pressure but they're scoring so many at the other end that it doesn't matter what we manage to do. Let's throw in the wrong one as we do usually. Again, a very short pitch delivery. Let's see if he can get it away. Tries to hook it, but it's gone straight to the fielder. But fortunately for the batsman, it bounced once first. This means we've got Webster back on strike, and he has struggled a bit more against us. So let's flight one in right on his feet and see if he takes the ambitious shot. He does, but it's straight to the fielder. Oh, you are joking. You have got to be joking. It was straight into his hands, and he's dropped it again. Two golden chances to take wickets, and our fielders are really letting us down here. I cannot believe that one's been dropped. We're about to see the replay of it now. It could not be easy. It was right into his hands. Didn't have to adjust his body at all. It's gone to his hands. Oh, that's awful. That is absolutely awful. Let's throw it in full. We probably need to take LBs now because if it's going to a fielder, we've seen they're not catching them. That one's a dot as it's edged to the offside. And we continue to have poor luck in this over. So we're just going to go full again. It's the only way I can see us getting a wicket here. We cannot trust catching. So we're just going to clean bowl them instead. Webster out for 47. And at least we've got a bit of personal pride. We've taken a wicket as he played through it early. We'll go for the top spinner to finish to the new batsman. And fingers crossed if it does fall to someone, they will be able to actually take a catch. Our economy's brilliant as Sibley comes in a man that of course has been talked about for an England test team position and this one he just tries to sweep away but he's straight to the fielder for a dot to finish another brilliant over and we've only conceded eight off our three overs but of course there's been two golden chances with drop catches and that's going to end up costing us the match well, Warwickshire have lost a couple of wickets now. We're going into the right hand at only 34 off 24. And imagine if those two catches had been taken. We would have been 3 for 8 personally. And Warwickshire would have been 5 down. As it is, there's still too not much pressure on them. So let's bowl this one onto leg stump. He's up in the air. Is he going to get round the fielder? He can't and he's gone for 6. We had to try and create something. And in the end, our economy's been harmed. And Hose has managed to get himself a 6. 11 off 3 for him. Him, it's been a deadly start he wants to get this done as quickly as possible and again he's tried to edge up and go big but he's hooked to the leg side only finds the fielder 28 needed off 22 and you have to say it's job done we're going to try and bowl a little bit wider now see if we can force an edge to the wicket keeper we can't but he's straight to the fielder at deep mid on another dot ball as we start to rebuild pressure this one straight at the stumps then. The full LB shout which got the wicket in the last over. And again we've caught the batsman on the pad. I think it might have hit him just outside leg. So we're not going to challenge if the umpire doesn't give it. He doesn't so no challenge from us. We might need that opportunity later in the innings. So another flight of delivery for the fifth ball. And then we'll finish with our top spinner as usual. So let's try and put this one in full on the pads. Big shot to the leg side. And he's managed to get it between the two fielders. Yes we've been expensive in this over but we've had to try and create catching opportunities slightly off the edge but it made it to the boundary and we're now one for 18 off 3.5 it's our last ball to hose who's been brilliant so far and if we don't take his wicket with this ball we can safely say it's game over it's hooked to the leg side it will be a dot a decent finish for us but it's going to be warwickshire's game
There's the confirmation then. Warwickshire did it with an over to spare. Ed Pollock man of the match for his 60. As they win by 7 wickets. We had the best figures for our team with 1 for 18. So I'm guessing the other 2 wickets were run outs. Certainly wouldn't have been any catches in the field. As we learnt from the 2 that were very easily dropped. 1 at backward mid wicket. And then 1 by the wicket keeper himself. We did contribute 19 with the bat. And we looked to be off to a flyer. But we got a little bit frustrated and got out first ball to the spinner. So a little bit disappointing with the bat as our sticky spell continues and we need to try and sort that out at the end of the first class year to win the title with Yorkshire and then take that form over to Australia. Well despite that defeat we did finish in first place in Pool B and we've qualified through for the finals. So for those of you that haven't seen finals day it's normally two semi-finals and then the final on the same day. A brilliant day out if you're a fan and I'd suggest going to watch it in real life if you can and after that we'll be back for the end of the first class season and then of course you can see the start of our Australian campaign. The Sheffield Shield is a real exciting moment for us and I can't wait to get involved at that level. But we're going to be back for the T20 finals so let's skip through to the next one. It's Lancashire who we're playing in the quarters or semis so we're just going to show you action from each round and fingers crossed we'll make it all the way to the final and we'll be able to have a great day out. But if you did enjoy that episode and seen some slightly bizarre fielding hinder us, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Of course we showed our frailty outside off stump to spin bowling again, but of course we caused the same damage to the opposition. Unfortunately our fielders weren't quite so helpful though. Two drop catches, one with a wicket keeper and one at mid wicket. Of course that's frustrating, but with the ball we have looked very good this year, and the T20 blast has certainly improved our game in that sense. With the bat, I guess it is nice to have a sticky spell once in a while, just to remind us to get back to basics, and fingers crossed we'll be able to recover pretty soon, maybe just in time for the semi and final. Subscribe to the channel for three episodes a week from this Cricket 19 career, every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday at midday. We'll continue with that schedule until the release of FM20 later this month, and then we'll continue with two episodes a week, those being on Tuesday and Saturday. Speaking of FM20, if you haven't seen our plans for that game yet, please do go back and catch up with last weekend's video. There'll be a link to it in the eye above somewhere as we discuss our plans for the new Football Manager game and talk about some of the saves we've got planned. There's also a vote in there so you can help shape some of the content on the channel, so if you haven't seen it yet then do go and take a look. Until that's released though, we will still have daily FM19 content, new episodes from our Talkie United series every Sunday to Thursday at half four, and then finally our Snooker 19 career continues, that's on Friday at 4.30. We're in the final event of that one as well, as we try to win the biggest prize in snooker, and we'll have action from every round on our route to the final, which hopefully we'll make it all the way to. But a massive thanks for watching this one and your continued support with the series as always. I really do appreciate it. And I hope to see you next time for another important episode as we start the T20 Blast Finals.